When you've been diagnosed with a gynecologic cancer, you may find yourself in unfamiliar territory. Every step of the way, there are decisions to be made. Knowing your options can be a breath of fresh air in the midst of cancer treatment, whether you've been newly diagnosed or have undergone several different therapies. And joining a clinical trial is another choice that you can make. Because they had gotten all the cancer and I thought, well, I'm, you know, I'm out of the woods. But she was like, well, no, because ovarian cancer comes back usually, even if you have a good, um, you know, a good um, response to treatment. And so she gave me, I believe it was like 10 to, or 20 to 30% chance of being around in five years. And I thought, ah, oh, that's not good enough because I have a 13 year old daughter and I'm not, I'm not gonna put up with that. My diagnosis was leiomyosarcoma. It's a rare soft tissue cancer that was found in my uterus. Well, I had never heard of leiomyosarcoma, and to this day I still even have a hard time explaining to people what exactly it is because it is, it's not common at all. A clinical trial is an opportunity for a patient to um, obtain access to drugs that might not be on the market. So. As you can imagine, anytime someone faces a cancer diagnosis, we can run out of standard of care treatments that are effective for the patient. When that happens, it's really nice to offer to, the, uh, to a patient, if they're interested, the opportunity to use an experimental medication. When I sit with a patient for a clinical trial, I define what is the goal of the clinical trial. And clearly I describe uh, the protocol and I discuss the side effects related to, to clinical trials. I think it's really important to remember that any clinical trial is based on a bedrock of laboratory investigation. We don't get to a clinical trial without a tremendous amount of effort in the laboratory that requires resources, energy, horsepower, intellect, all of that. Like any major life decision, deciding to enroll in a clinical trial involves weighing risks and benefits and overcoming misconceptions. Patients are sometimes leery about participating in clinical trials because they think they're being, quotes, like guinea pigs. Uh, and so we want to reassure them that that's not the case, that they're getting sort of the standard treatment, but they may have an opportunity to get another drug or a different treatment that uh, may enhance uh, their uh, chances of responding or being cured. I suppose the biggest misconception I hear is that a clinical trial is only after every other drug has failed. And this isn't true. Clinical trials vary. Some clinical trials are designed to be the first treatment. Other clinical trials are designed after two treatments. It varies a lot. Many of the larger clinical trials are confirmatory trials and maybe um, rather than proof of concept are actually looking for um, the perfect dose or the perfect duration of treatment. So we might actually be able to really tell the patient with some accuracy what to expect. Your doctor can help you identify the clinical trial opportunity that is most in line with your goals. Historically, there, there has been um, negative feelings about clinical trials, but not not in my, uh, in my family or, or with me, but I do understand that there is this, um, this hesitancy. It's important for you and your doctor to have an honest conversation about the risks and potential benefits of a clinical trial. New drugs and procedures may have side effects. They may be ineffective or less effective than current treatments. And even if the new treatment has benefits, it may not work for you personally. There's no guarantee, but it is an opportunity and you are watched and monitored throughout the process. And you're part of the decision. You're not just a passive person who's going through a clinical trial. You do have say so. And they should know that uh, at, there are numerous um, safety stop gaps built into a clinical trial so that if they're not doing well, if they're experiencing too much toxicity, if 
um, they just feel like they can't continue on for whatever reason. They have the opportunity to withdraw. As far as potential benefits are concerned, women who participate in gynecologic cancer clinical trials have access to new drugs and interventions before they are widely available. Clinical trials nurses will be on hand to answer your questions. And gynecologic cancer researchers will be closely monitoring your health and any side effects. If the approach being studied is found to be helpful, you may be among the first to benefit. In the laboratory, we have very limited system cell culture, um, and we cannot really predict very accurately how good a novel treatment works. So we really need in a real world setting to test any treatments. Modern chemotherapy regimens um, that the gynoc doctors are using every day for new patients all were discovered and validated through um, large clinical trials that required a lot of participation, participation from willing patients to understand um, what is really going to improve survival. If you feel that the medical benefits outweigh the risks, you may still have questions about how a clinical trial will impact your daily life. In the consent form should be very, very well laid out what uh, the insurance company will be responsible for, uh, what's considered standard of care versus what's considered under the purview of the clinical trial that should be covered by the trial itself. I mean, we've had a lot of conversations around, you know, the the effort that it's going to take to, to be in the trial and um, you know how much travel is going to be, how much that's going to weigh on our family and taking care of our daughter, mm -hmm. um, and the, you know, what the, the financial costs of it are going to be. We agreed you know, that we would take this on as a family and you know, get help from parents and siblings and, and friends to watch our daughter and help make it work. You know, life went out as normal, really, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I'd get a little crabby, but, you know. Well, I won't bring that up. <laughs> Clinical trials are an option at any stage of treatment, from initial diagnosis to recurrence to survivorship. When considering a clinical trial, it is helpful to understand the different phases of clinical trials that might be involved in your treatment. Phase one trials are usually the first step in testing a new therapy in human beings and usually involve 20 to 40 patients. These early trials are designed to study the safety of a new therapy, as well as how the treatment is processed in the body. This helps scientists determine the best dose for the new treatment. People with many kinds of cancer can participate in phase one clinical trials and often it does not matter how many treatments you have completed previously. If the scientists find the new treatment is effective in treating a particular kind of cancer, the next step is to test it in a phase two trial. Phase two trials test how well the therapy works on a specific kind of cancer, also known as clinical efficacy. Whether you are eligible for participation may depend upon how many treatments you have had in the past. These trials involve a larger number of participants, usually between 25 and 100 patients. Phase three clinical trials compare the clinical efficacy of the new treatment against the current standard treatment. Enrollment can range from 100 to 1,000 patients. Your doctor can help you decide what phase of clinical trial best suits your needs. I think people need to understand on the very sad end of our work is that in general we can't do clinical trials in the very last stages of life. It's not possible to test an experimental drug on somebody who is bed bound and in severe pain or whose kidneys and liver are no longer functioning. So that isn't the time when we want people to first be thinking about a clinical trial. Sometimes clinical trials are randomized, which means your treatment plan will be assigned randomly to you like the toss of a coin. The treatment plan assigned to you may be the experimental therapy or might be a well-established regimen being used for comparison. Sometimes a placebo is used for comparison. A placebo is a treatment that looks just like the study treatment but does not have the active ingredient, like a sugar pill. Although there are investigational trials where one treatment may be compared against a placebo, 
The vast majority of trials utilizing placebos add the placebo to treatments that are known to be effective. For example, one treatment is known to be effective in treating cancer, but a new drug given with this treatment might be more effective. A study designed to see if the two drugs are better than the one alone might compare these treatments with the original drug plus a placebo. In this kind of study, everyone who participates gets active treatment. And when I signed the paperwork, I did see that there was a possibility of a placebo. But I knew that I also was going to have traditional treatment as well. So this would be a complement to that treatment. That's the way I view the clinical trial, is that it would be a complement to it, and I could proceed on from there. So I didn't have problems with that. To ensure the most reliable results, researchers want study participants to be alike in certain ways. This may include the type of gynecologic cancer, cancer stage, patient age, previous treatments, specific gene mutations, and other health considerations, like heart disease or diabetes. The way the process went would be for my clinical particulars to be forwarded to a tumor board. So I learned some new language. That was a new term for me. And the tumor board would review my profile and including other diagnostics that were required, like thyroid, um, you know, uh, labs, and determine my eligibility to participate in this trial. A multidisciplinary care conference, also known as a tumor board, is a, really a terrific way to be able to um, get extra opinions and um, detailed uh, insights into, you know, best steps for a patient. And at our tumor boards, one of the things that we always discuss is might a clinical trial be best for this particular patient at this particular time or not? And what clinical trials do we have available? So that's discussed amongst the radiation doctors, the surgeons, and the medical oncologists, all of whom might have different thoughts about and different knowledge about what's available. Joining a clinical trial usually requires additional hospital visits to obtain medications and monitor progress. So every patient that comes here uh, not only sees me, uh, but they also see some other member of our healthcare team, usually more than one other member. And that may be a medical student, a resident, a fellow, a nurse practitioner. We have uh, clinical care coordinators that uh, uh, help us uh, run our clinical trials. Uh, we have a variety of people that uh, can uh, address their needs, social workers, nutritionists. So. Um, and then we have a group of nurses uh, in our infusion center who uh, get them the chemotherapy and address the issues related to toxicity uh, uh, from the drugs or whatever treatment they're getting. In my case, um, or in any case in this particular study, there are monthly uh, surveillance exams with Dr. Lorraine and that includes a physical exam, self-reporting, and review of the diagnostics. Uh, a port draw labs and all of this is done every month which would be any cancer survivor's dream to be surveilled to such an extent that often would be a gift. For patients who live farther away from comprehensive cancer care centers there are ways to overcome the distance. No one in a rural area is looking to add a commute, parking, and the other stressors of coming to a cancer center to their cancer treatment regimen. That said, um, we are living in an, uh, a day of oral chemotherapy, not exclusively of course, but many trials right now include an oral chemotherapy component. So that can mean that some things are done closer to home and they're not coming in for infusions. Many times we can order laboratory studies and imaging studies at, at hospitals or clinics closer to where the patient lives. While the ultimate goal of cancer treatment is to cure the disease, sometimes the most realistic goal is to ensure the best quality of life for as long as possible. Even with advanced disease with a poor prognosis, clinical trials can offer patients the gift of more time. Everything that I've ever wanted to do, I've accomplished. I went back to school during those 18 years. I always wanted to be a physical therapist assistant. I was able to obtain that goal. I've been to Italy three times, and 
I mean, I would never have guessed that I would have been able to do that 18 years ago. I don't know that there are a typical treatment plan out there that could that we could see benefits from. So I think these having these opportunities has kept our fight going longer. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I think it's been almost five years since mm -hmm. since you've been diagnosed, and I think you know a large part of you know why we're here having this conversation is because of the clinical trials that she's been a part of. To keep hope alive for the thousands of women impacted by gynecologic cancers each year, the Foundation for Women's Cancer provides grants and awards to researchers to conduct studies that may lead to advances in gynecologic cancer treatment. Thanks to this research and the donors who support it, women with gynecologic cancers have more treatment choices. And using online resources, Finding a clinical trial is much easier than it was in the past. But challenges remain in cancer research funding, and patients of all backgrounds are needed to present a true picture of how well new treatments work. In the United States, there is tremendous disparity in healthcare based on race, ethnicity, sometimes gender, education level. And as it relates to clinical trials, I think the onus is on all of us, is all of us to offer all women clinical trials, no matter color, education, ethnicity, doesn't matter. It is important to know you have options, and the choice to join a clinical trial may be the right option for you. You get this opportunity to participate in a clinical trial where you're saying that I made a difference. And so therefore, you're not only empowered, but you're saying that it mattered. I mattered. I participated in a clinical trial, and I mattered not only in my own health, but in others as well, because I've, I will always have been a participant, and that's something that someone can't take from you. When I take my tablets twice a day, uh, I may be taking them by myself, but I am not alone because all of the effort, the energy, the intention, the desire, the plan, the background, the training of brilliant people, whether they are the researchers or my medical team, everyone had a role in my amazingly good outcome. Map out your treatment options and talk to your doctor about joining a clinical trial.